I'm going to show you how to register a user in Lotus Foundations. Now you're going to go to the main screen on your server and log in. As per what I've shown you in some other training videos on setting things up and configuring um, Lotus Foundations in the first place. So if you haven't seen that video, you might want to go back to it. But um, my address here is 10.10.43 um, colon 8043. So that's the kind of thing you're looking for. Okay, so I put in my root password at the moment. And I type in my, yeah, so the password goes in. Right, submit. I don't want to remember the password here on my browser because I want to keep it secure. I might be using another computer perhaps, so I just said not to remember it. Okay, I see a bit of stuff that's going on on the screen. You might want to just check this every time you go in. It's a good practice just to make sure that nothing has gone um, pear shaped at all and everything's looking pretty good here. Okay. Right, so now what we want to look for is on the side here we see user setup. And this is where we go to set up a user on the system. So you need to have the right privileges, ad admin privileges to be able to set up users. With your ID. And then we go in here and um, we can search for existing users if we want. Um, we can see um, various teams and members that we can add to those teams listed there. Okay, so if we go down a bit, we see user setup here, and we can just go add user. So I click on add user, user ID. In this case, I'm going to set up the user with me. Okay, so my user ID is going to be, in this case, I'm going to call myself. Um, Say J blocks, J blocks. Okay, and the full name is going to be J blocks. Password, in the password, and for this demo, I'm just going to make a password. The word password for J blocks. So this will be his logged on ID to the network and everything. Okay, preferred language is English. Administrator access, we can give that to him if we want him to be able to log in and add users and check out things, configure things on the server, but in this case he's just going to be a general user so I'm going to say no. Allow FTP access, so FTP access is, FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol and this is helpful when you want to have files maybe available over the internet for instance um, for users to be able to get to. So in this case I could say yes or no to that, I'm going to say yes. So he could access the FTP server and grab files out of that. Um, over the internet, whatever the case might be. It doesn't necessarily give them access to all the files on the network, maybe only FTP um, files in the FTP um, directories. Okay, So allow VPN access, so that will allow him to connect remotely um, via a secure connection. Once he's connected, he'll have an IP address which will be assigned to him so that he, you know, an IP address is just this fancy thing up here in the browser window, basically a way of you know, the network, your computer network, knowing where everything is. It's just like a post box on the front of your house, and it's got a number on it, and that's how people know where to find you. There's a street sign and a number. But this is the same kind of thing, but just in computer language. So, so he would be given one of these addresses, and basically the rest of the network would think that he was just there at the office, plugged in. So he'd have access to everything that he'd usually have access to at the office, if he was there. Um, so, quota value, we can put different values on quotas for what he can store on there so that he doesn't go over a certain amount. And various teams that he could belong to as well. And so we can add them to various teams. So we might say auto-install. Okay, so that means he can automatically install software. Um, we might make him a webmaster. Um, we might give him the ability to manage backups perhaps. Just go join for whatever we want to join, and then scroll down a bit more. Okay, save changes. Okay, and those changes are now saved. If we scroll down here, now in the team setup, we can see who belongs to these various teams like Auto and Storm Backup. We see that J Blogs is now mentioned in there. Okay, and if we wanted to remove him from that, we could just click on the little pencil next to actions and that will get us the ability to remove him from a team that perhaps we don't want him to belong to anymore. So teams just basically are groups of people 
um, that we want to assign specific um, tasks to or, or roles that they can they can work with. So um, so it makes it a lot easier for us if we want to adjust things in some of the security settings where we can say, okay, only people from this team backup can be um, doing various things in this area of our server. So we have backup, and um, perhaps um, you know rather than listing all the users and. When a user leaves, maybe having to go in there and just tidy everything up, or whatever the case might be, you can just uh, make sure that they're removed from that particular group. Okay, so that makes it nice and easy. So that is how easy it is to actually register a user in the system. So here we've got here his details now. Okay, teams he belongs to.